In 2023, Guardians of the Galaxy Part 3 was well received. It gave us the origin of Rocket Raccoon. It was a satisfying conclusion of this wacky space action comedy with mostly positive reviews and making $845 million at the box office. The anime Spider Verse sequel was even more well received. It gave us more backstory on Spider Gwen, gave us a stunning cliffhanger to set up the third one. It made $690 million at the box office, but only on a $100 million budget. Other than those two, it was a real disastrous year for comic book movies and action movies overall. With bomb after bomb after bomb. The Transformers, Indiana Jones, Fast X, Blue Beetle, Ant-Man Part 3, The Flash, and the Marvels all crashed. So not even Marvel is invincible anymore. And I think the studios need to reevaluate how they make films. Now let's talk about the printed comic book industry because that's where all the good ideas for these movies come from in the first place. Now, without any further ado, I present to you the top 10 comics of 2023 according to Comic Power. Warning for spoilers. Number 10, Silent Tales from DC Comics, released on April 19th, 2023. This is both drawn and written by Gustavo Duarte. I use the phrase written very loosely because it has no dialogue in it. The whole premise is that it's an anthology comic where you can follow these wacky adventures without any actual dialogue. What you're looking at right now is the first story involving Harley Quinn, in which she goes to a hardware store and the clerk thinks she's going to rob it. And she's like, oh no, I'm not going to rob it. And she buys paint and a big mallet. And the clerk thinks it's over and he overreacted, it. But she comes back with that same mallet and the paint she used to color it to rob the place for real. Like I said, no words. When they do have dialogue, they show a symbol. As you can see in this panel here where she's asking for paint. Have you ever seen the art pieces by Sergio Argonez in Mad Magazine that tells wacky, dark comedy stories with no dialogue? It's something like that. Other stories include Superman saving the world by being a giant insect that was created by Lex Luthor. Zatanna adopting a pet rabbit and it becomes a magical adventure. Cyborg dressed like Run DMC and hanging out at a vinyl record shop. Of course, Batman having to investigate the Joker who's hanging out at a swanky art exhibit. This comic was originally called Speechless and DC solicited it under that name. But that infringed on the copyright of another comic that was called Speechless, so they changed it to Silent Tales. I really love Silent Tales. Sometimes comics get too serious and this effort takes these iconic characters and basically puts them in a comic strip. Number 9, The Transformers, released on October 4th, 2023, and it was my pick of the week then. And surprisingly, it's licensed to Image Comics, which is surprising because Image usually does creator-owned work. As you know, it originally started out as a Japanese toy line that's now owned by Hasbro. It's one of the most iconic franchises of all time and worthy of its own video. I'll talk about that one day. In this adventure, they're returning to the original Transformers lore, where Optimus Prime has to leave his army against the Decepticons. Did you know that the Transformers lore was written by Marvel? It's true. Hasbro hired them in the early 1980s to give them a backstory. That's why the Transformers always feel so comic booky. Their first comic book made series also from Marvel was released in 1984. Their breakout in popularity really came from the animated series which ran from 1984 to 1987. They threw in the animated standalone film at that time as well in 1986. When the 2000s came and they had the CGI to make this look credible, these characters were the stars of a continuous non-stop avalanche of films, which was bled dry by Paramount and misdirected by Michael Bay. I can't stand that guy. So the 2023 comic book series is written and drawn by Daniel Warren Johnson. He was just another artist on Artist Alley at a comic book convention. And he was discovered by Image Talent Scouts in 2015. And he put out his first book called Extremity in 2016, a horror action revenge tale to critical acclaim. He did more of his trademark horror action over at DC with Wonder Woman Dead Earth. He received more critical acclaim in 2022 with Do a Power Bomb, which is a mashup of professional wrestling and sci-fi. Now he's here drawing and writing trans Transformers for Image is a good life. And issue number one is up to its third reprint. You definitely should get this. Number eight, Exo Man of War Unconquered number one from Valiant Comics. First released in March 22nd, 2023, where it was the pick of the week. He's a very awesome action hero, but let me explain him for people who don't know who he is. In 1989, a group of Marvel creators led by Jim Shooter tried to buy Marvel, but were not successful. So in 1990, they founded Valiant Comics instead. They build up their connected universe by using established Gold Key Comics characters first, such as Solar Man the Atom and Magnus Robot Fighter. They had even more success with their original characters, such as Shadow Man, Bloodshot, and of course, Exo Man of War. Shown here is his first appearance in comics. His name is Eric. He's a crown prince of a Visigoth tribe fighting against the Roman Empire in the 5th century. But he gets captured by some spider-like aliens called the Vine. The Vine is an advanced civilization that uses humans as labor and sometimes food. But Eric leads a human resistance uprising against the spider aliens in a Spartacus type move. And in the process, he captures their most powerful weapon, the Exo Man of War armor. 
This armor is like a religious relic to them, and it's prophesied that one day their greatest warrior will be able to wear it, someone who is the most worthy. But so far, every Vine member that has tried has died. So a primitive human actually taking it over and not just surviving, but thriving is not only militarily bad, but it's blasphemous. Eric returns to Earth with this powerful weapon, but 1500 years have passed, so he's a man out of time. But the armor is sentient, so it teaches him about today's world. He also takes over a shell company called Orb Industries that the Vine had started on Earth, where they had disguised themselves as humans. So Eric is engaged in an ongoing battle against the Vine who are trying to get back to armor. He's like a mashup of Conan being that he's a barbarian, and Venom because the armor he wears is sentient, and Iron Man because he's a hero that wears armor and leads a high-tech corporation, and Exo uses the King Arthur archetype just like Thor does, about a warrior of royal blood who is proven worthy to yield a powerful weapon. So that's what you need to know about Exo. The artwork looks amazing. The storytelling is incredible. If all that sounds good to you, then you should be getting this. I hope I sold you on it. Number 7 is Silver Surfer Ghost Light Number 1 from Marvel Comics. Released on February 1st, 2023. It promises that the next great superhero saga starts here. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but the character that is Ghost Light was basically upgraded to this position, so it's a character that already existed. Is he just a black version of the Silver Surfer? Well, there's more to it than that. But this title does have an all-black creative team. It's written by John Jennings, who's a New York Times best-selling author, and a graphic novelist, editor, professor, scholar. It's drawn by Valentin de la Ronda. He first got famous for drawing X-Factor and the feminist sci-fi of Bitch Planet from Image Comics. And man, I can't stop talking about this book. I talk about it all the time. It's great. As you know, the Silver Surfer made his first appearance in comics in Fantastic Four number 48, 49, and issue number 50 of The Coming of Galactus. The Surfer was important in storylines like the Infinity Gauntlet and other things. As for the new ghost-like character, if you love cosmic level superhero stories, then this is definitely for you. Number 6, Kill Your Darlings, number 1 from Image Comics, first released on September 6, 2023. If you're a fan of psychological horror, sci-fi, fantasy, you're going to love this. We're first introduced to our lead character of Rose, who's about 8 years old at the time. And she's created a fantasy escapist world in her head. And she's a warrior princess who's involved in medieval intrigue, where her single parent mother is in the kitchen who's worried about bills. She protects her daughter's innocence and lets her disappear into that dream world. Rose uses her stuffed animals as participants in this imagination. World. The world looks like Alice in Wonderland meets Lord of the Rings. No big deal, right? A kid with imagination playing with her stuff animals. But then things turn because it appears that this world is becoming real. She snaps back into our reality and her house is on fire in real life. Over the next couple of issues, they age the character up and now as a teenager, she's the kid that gets sent away to a special school because they think that she might be a little nuts. However, she gets recruited back into the war because it needs to be finished. And the way the story is presented, it makes you think as the reader, is this actually happening? or is it actually just in her head? If you're a fan of this genre, then Kill Your Darlings is worth your time. Number five is going to be Titans number one. It was the pick of the week for May 17th, 2023. I've always been a big fan of the Teen Titans, now just known as the Titans. This iconic incarnation of this team first appeared in DC Comics Presents number 26 in 1980, created by Marv Wolfman and the late George Perez. This version of Starfire, Raven, and Cyborg were brand new characters, and Dick Grayson Robin, now known as Nightwing, was the leader of the team. Issue number one was a big hit with this iconic cover, and issue number two gave us the first appearance of Deathstroke. So this is a reboot of the original team, and this image that you saw earlier in this video is a virgin variant of this issue, which shows Starfire with tats all over her body which shows different incarnations of the team, which is pretty cool. The most recent live action web series was okay. It wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it wasn't horrible either. But let's face it, the Titans are popular enough to have their own live action movie series. For some reason, the new boss James Gunn wants to do a live action The Authority instead of the Titans, which I don't understand. But Titans the comic is on solid ground. Number four is No One from Image Comics, which was released on March 15th, 2023. This is one of the biggest surprise hits of the year so far, and it's going to its fifth printing. This takes place in modern-day Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a dark, vigilante revenge tale. The murder of a prominent person there sparks political unrest through copycat killers, and a mass vigilante shows up to hold the powerful accountable. This new series is getting critical acclaim, and is getting comparisons to the Batman Long Halloween storyline, which is the best compliment in the world. At the time I make this video, no one is up to five issues and the first three of them went into reprints. Last year, AWA put out Knighted, which was a spoof of the Batman genre. While no one is more serious in the vein of Batman, it's inspired by a Dark Knight, but it's not a complete copycat of it, so it's worth checking out. The actress, Rachel Lay Cook, who's most famous for the movie She's All That, is involved with the making of this comic and she participates in the podcast about it and has formally attached herself to this franchise in the event it becomes a live action project. If no one got made, I'd be the first one to buy a ticket or stream it. 
Number three is Gangster Ass Barista, number one from Black Mask Comics. It was released on January 4th, 2023. The name of the title should spark your interest just from the jump, right? This is in the genre of the dark comedy crime thriller. The woman on the cover here is the lead character. She was formerly in organized crime, doing organized crime things and having a lot of fun doing it. But things got too hot, so she tried to go straight and live a normal life working at a coffee house. So, of course, some incident happens that brings her back into the world of crime. You've seen this trope before about someone in organized crime getting out and and something brings them back in. The spin on this is that it's a pretty young woman with tattoos. You can see the interior work is all done in black and white and I love it. It works incredibly well for what this story is. And let me tell you this, the writing on this feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It definitely feels like something he would write and produce, which is the best compliment in the world. So yeah, this is M.A. for Mature. Black Mass has put out critically acclaimed titles in the past such as We Can Never Go Home and Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, which both are brilliant. And Gangsta Ass Barista is up there too to me. So this is definitely something you should be picking up. It's a non-superhero, dark comedy, crime suspense thriller. The character motivations and the dialogue sound very authentic. If you like Tarantino or things inspired by him, then this is for you. Number two is Bloodline, the daughter of Blade number one from Marvel Comics which came out on February 1st, 2023. This is the first full appearance of Brielle Brooke, who is the long-hidden teenage daughter of Blade, the vampire hunter. I made a previous separate video about this character in the past, and I really love what's going on here because we have the opportunity for this to turn into a Buffy the Vampire type story. And it looks like she's going to take over the family business of slaying vampires from her dead. It too has an all-black creative team with Danny Lore writing and Karen S. Darbo is the artist on this, and this is a can't miss. I think that Brielle has a good chance of being a hit this slight mouse Morales and Riri Williams were. Now, if you keep in score, the first appearance of this character in comics is AXE Judgment Day Free Comic Book Day Edition, which came out in the spring of 2022, in which she has a quick four-page adventure where she beats up a vampire who is trying to take advantage of a friend of hers. She made her second appearance in comics in Crypt of Shadows Number 1, which came out in the summer of 2022. And her third appearance and first full appearance is in the book we're talking about right so now. I would hoard all three of these and put these away in case this character becomes very popular. But we know that the live-action Blade reboot is supposed to come out in 2025. Oscar winner Michelle Sharia Ali playing the title character of Blade. So will his daughter Brielle show up as well? Well, this black female actress named Milan Ray, who is now 15 years old at the time made this, has been cast for this movie. Her breakout was in a reboot of The Wonder Years, in which she played the love interest of the main character, Dean. At the time I make this video, we don't know if this actress is going to play Brielle, but she's the right age to play it, and we'll see in the future. But either way, Brielle is a great character and a great addition to the Blade universe. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I know it's been a long video, but let's go over some honorable mentions before before we go to number one. Werewolf by Night, number one from Marvel Comics. That's Elsa Bloodstone the cover. Is she going to hunt Jack Russell or is she going to team up with American Psycho, number one from Massive Comics. This is a gory story that takes place in the universe of the movie of the same name. And the interior art looks just as good as this cover. Batman Beyond, Neo Gothic, number one from DC Comics. Continuation of the exciting and fast paced adventures of Terry McGinnis, the future Batman. Spider Gwen, Smash, number one from Marvel Comics. This adventure downplays the crime fighting and plays up the punk rock band she's in called the Mary Janes where she plays drums. And let's face it, that cover rocks. Money Shot comes again, number one from Vault Comics. It's a wacky, adult, raunchy space comedy about a group of scientific astronauts who fail to get funding for the government, so their adventures are funded by the porn industry in which they live stream themselves having sex with aliens. That may sound like an insane premise, but it's hilarious. The Hellfire Gala 2023 from Marvel Comics. This is now an annual high-class affair on the mutant island of Cocoa, and your host is Emma Frost. It's one heck of a fashion show to see your favorite mutant characters redesigned. Peacemaker tries hard, number one from DC Comics. This character went from completely obscure to having a cult following due to John Cena playing his character in the Suicide Squad movie. In a successful web series, and the comic is really working as well. Miss Marvel, the new mutant number one from Marvel Comics. This has our hero Kamala Khan hanging out with the X-Men as Marvel tries to cancel out her inhuman background and turn her into a mutant now. I was surprised. I actually like this. It's very good. Petrohead, number one from Image Comics. It's a dystopian future disaster tale from Rob Williams. This is the guy who got famous for writing Judge Dredd. It's about racing robots that run off of fossil fuels, but now they live in a world where they're unwanted and found to be obsolete. And Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer, number one from Massive Comics. The name says it all. It's a horror action take on Harriet Tubman. It was an ultra successful Kickstarter, but this is the first time it's in comic stores now. That's an insanely good premise and very good execution. Okay, now let's get to the number one comic of 2023 according to Comic Power. And that is... 
Black Panther number one from Marvel Comics, released on June 14, 2023, where it was the pick of the week. Due to the untimely death of Chadwick Boseman in real life, his character in the MCU, T'Challa, is also dead. The comics are a different universe than the live action movies, so therefore, T'Challa lives. He's got some new wrinkles to his Black Panther outfit, and he's rocking a beard in this continuity. I don't want to give away a lot of spoilers because I think you should be reading this, but the overall arc in his continuity is he's in exile and he's working in the shadows. Do you remember? Remember the run of Black Panther that started in 2016, written by Ta-Nehisi Coates. And he did a great job of adding to the lore of the Black Panther universe by creating the Intergalactic Kingdom of Wakanda, basically a permanent space outpost of Wakanda. Since Marvel's doing Secret Wars, they may lead up to this and tie into it. Coates does novels and essays, so the one complaint about his work was that the pacing was too slow for comic books. I agree with that. It took him forever to get to the point, so you need to read his work sort of like a graphic novel, where you read several issues together in a collected edition for full art instead of individual issues. This latest art rebooted back to number one is now headed by Eve Ewing who is making history as the first black woman to ever write Black Panther and her pacing is much much faster and what comic book fans are more used to. The artwork is done by Christopher Allen and man it looks amazing. We get the first appearance which is a cameo of a new villain named Besa who rocks the cover in issue number two, battles T'Challa and is mentioned by name. And oh yeah, by the way, Black Panther goes on to fight Deathlock. You ain't heard from him in a while now. So more things happen in four issues in this run than they would happen in about 20 issues in the Ta-Nehisi Coates run. I'm not saying it's better overall because we haven't got enough sample size, but I am saying it's much faster. But T'Challa's adventures are in good hands. The product they're putting out right now looks fantastic. So, due to all the things I mentioned before, I believe that Black Panther number one, written by Eve Ewing, is more than worthy of being the top comic of 2023. Yeah! Thank you for watching my top 10 comics of the year report. Shown here is a recap of all the comics that made the list. If you don't agree with my list, please go to the comics section and post your own top 10 comics of the year. I encourage feedback from the people that watch my channel. You should be seeing an end screen now that shows some of my previous top 10 comics of the year reports, 2021 and 2022 respectively. Click on watch them and binge. And by the way, be sure to subscribe and share my videos because I don't think my numbers indicate just how good my channel is in terms of subscriber count. Until next time, this is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye and happy 2024.